So this is today's agenda. Um, this is BotChem's fourth cohort demo day, and we're all really excited on um, scripts that you've all submitted. Basically for BotChem cohort four, um, it's a four week course, and we've added a lot of new elements there. Um, so for example, we've created expert sessions that some of you have joined. So for example, sharing um, Yella sharing on cross exchange market making level two on auto routing, managing multiple bots, um, liquidity and introduction to liquidity and how um, people manage liquidity and members networking sessions as well. Uh, so that um, those are one hour sessions where people can all join and uh, network with one another. And we have students from over 10 countries In this video, I'll explain the purpose and functionality of the 1 over N portfolio script. Firstly, the goal of the script is to provide users with a diversified cryptocurrency portfolio without the need for analyzing, analyzing or predicting individual currency performance. The script achieves this by allocating investments equally in dollar value across a selected universe of cryptocurrencies. We built this script to provide a reasonable baseline performance for future directional strategies. Our hypothesis is that optimal diversification can be achieved by equally allocating investments across a selected universe of cryptocurrencies without any need for analyzing or predicting individual cryptocurrency performance. This proposition is supported by the academic research of Victor de Miguel et Ali. The one uh, over N portfolio can be used as a baseline benchmark for future directional strategies. So how does the script work? The script creates a cryptocurrency portfolio by equally distributing the allocated fund across the top N cryptocurrencies by value, excluding stable coins. Users need to define a given set. Here, the currency portfolio of top N currencies, a connector name. So here we are doing the Binance paper trade. Their allocated funds are retrieved automatically as well as the current price of the quote currencies. The quote currencies is US dollar. The script monitors the market and adjusts the portfolio accordingly to maintain the original allocation ratios. Let's run the script. The strategy status will show information such as the number of open trades. And it shows the current value of the portfolio in a base and quote currencies and the deviation of the equilibrium value in the quote currency when running the status quo. We need to have a tolerance rule when we will not trade. So we, in this case, we don't trade under one dollar. Um, so otherwise, uh, all the min, uh, minor uh, deviations from uh, the optimum will already create a trade. And that's the wrap. Thank you for watching this video. Hello everyone, I'm Alex, a software engineer based in Singapore and Hong Kong. So today I would like to introduce you a script that I've recently written, uh, which is the spot and perpetual arbitrage. So uh, this strategy is actually uh, archived in Hummingbot code base. It is offered in the, as a strategy base but I will write it into a script base uh, and also resolve some of the bug that I found from the, from the strategy based script. So how does this sports perpetual arbitrage work? So it's trading on a trading pair uh, and it's trading on its spot market and also the perpetual market. And for the perpetual market, uh, it is running as a one-way mode. So how it works is essentially try to profit from the divergence and the convergence behavior between between the two price. Uh, the flow chart of my script, by default, the bot will start as a closed state. And there are two events that I will use. Uh, one is the event that the perpetual market has set the leverage and set the, um, the mode to be one way. The second event is to, uh, is to track if the order has been completely filled. When these two events are triggered, I will update the internal state of the bot. Um, when the bot is running the on-tick, I will start by doing some pre-check. The pre-check includes some uh, to check if the leverage has been set. 
and to check if the one-way mode has been set in the perpetual market. Next, I will try to update the internal state. Um, there are two ways to update the internal state. First is to update the state from closing to closed or changing it from open into opened. So the way uh, by when the stop when the bot start running, uh, this this internal state will not be updated. But when the bot start running, uh, this update state will be useful. Uh, this will be useful to uh, to track whether uh, whether when there is an in flight orders whether they have been complete. When they are complete, then I will update the state to be closed or to be opened uh, afterwards. And then I will proceed to check uh, after the state update. Uh, if the state is still opening or closing, if it is still opening or closing, uh, I will skip this on tick because it indicates that um, uh, there are still some uh, pending orders to be complete. Um, but once the state has been either open or closed, I will proceed to the next stage. Um, in case the state is closed, I will do an additional check. Essentially, I will check whether uh, whether the timestamp of this on tick has passed the buffer time. Uh, essentially, I will set a buffer time to uh, to open the next uh, arbitrage opportunity. And in case it's also passed, uh, I will trigger to the to see whether there's a trading opportunities. There are two options to trade. Uh, either either the spot price is significantly higher than the perpetual price, uh, or the perpetual price is significantly higher than the spot price. If that's the first case, I will buy the spot and do the short on the perpetual. Um, and then I will also update the state. Um, in this case, uh, if the bot is starting from closed, I will uh, toggle it to be an opening state. And if it is in the opened state, I will toggle it to be the closing state. Um, and the same principle will be applied in the in the second option of the trading. So uh, this flowchart will keep going uh, for the for the on take method. So finally, uh, let me show you how the script will look like when I start running it. So in this case, I use Bybit Spot and Bybit Perpetual as an example. Um, this script will also work in cross exchange environment as well. So I suggest you to give it a try. So now you can see that the bot has been running and you can see that I keep updating the CSV file in order to do some debugging, essentially to keep track of the best bit and the best ask between the spot market and the perpetual market. If I want to know more about the status of the bot, I can use a uh, format status. Here you can see, um, the the deviation uh the devi the deviation of two trading option so the first trading option is to buy spot uh short perpetual and here I try to track uh how much deviation between the two price another trading option is to long long perp and selling the spot and here I also try to track uh, uh the deviation between them uh this could help us to see um how how far away from from the bot is able to uh, execute a, a trading opportunity in order to do more debugging uh, i also keep track of the balance um, and also keep track of the internal state of the bot so that's that's all i have so thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time Hi everyone, uh, I decided to implement a demo script for this cohort of BotCamp uh, because we introduced a candles feed recently. And um, I think it's actually a really extensible component that allows you to do very, a lot of different things. Um, and so I wanted to show a script that's kind of like more like a utility script that might help you, uh, you know, build those strategies. And so it implements a very simple backtester using the candles feed. Um, now, because the candles feed is just historical price data uh, organized into, you know, open, low, um, close like in like in volume values um it's it's not going to be a very uh, precise back tester um however I, I do think that it's it might help people uh you know just find what uh you know what what range of spreads work uh what markets work uh and overall i thought it might uh help us decide whether we should incorporate and expand on the this back testing features 
So basically what this does um, is you can set, define a very simple market making strategy, uh, define exchange, uh, pair, uh, bid ask spreads and order amount. And then you also tell it how many days you want to back this for. Uh, it'll pull that amount of data from the candles feed. Um, and, it'll, it'll, and basically it assumes that uh, if your spreads are within that open, you know, if, in, within the, like the highs and lows of that candle, then your order is filled uh, and uh, it kind of like moves on to the next candle. So it's a very simple back tester. Uh, it, it won't work for um, strategies that use order book data like cross exchange market making, but for a very simple pre marketing strategy, I think this uh, might work. Um, and so the idea is that after it processes that data, uh, it would produce a summary very similar to the history command um, in the status function. So um, in terms of logic, I, I created a very simple spreadsheet over here. Um, and uh, that, that this kind of like helped me understand like how the how this might work. Uh, okay, so um, so yeah, so now it's starting to fetch the candles. So I did seven days, so it's about ten thousand one minute candles. Uh, so now it's done, and then I can type the status command to to see the status. Um, so yeah, so this uh, this summary looks pretty similar to the history command. Uh, so uh, according to this, um, you know, I, I sent my spreads. Here's my backtesting info over here. Uh, here's how many buys and sells I did. Um, and, and, and you can see the, the change in inventory um, and the return. So one note here is that uh, this is probably going to be extremely optimistic uh, because the, the candles are actually mid prices. So um, so I think um, obviously, you know, if I actually ran this live, it probably would perform much worse than this. So I think as a next step, what I want to do is um, try to kind of like modify the script so that it can run the back test, uh, but also kind of like uh, maybe also run paper trading mode as well. Uh, and try to kind of like calculate the performance over the same interval, uh, because then uh, what what I, what what I'll likely need to do to back test add like a slippage buffer or maybe boost the fees or increase the fees such that the performance is kind of similar to what it would be under paper trading mode in a forward test. Uh, but in order to do that, yeah, um, I would probably need to kind of make some modifications or or try to set this up so that it can kind of like both uh, generate the back test and kind of like calculate forward uh, data at the same time in order to make that calculation. Um, but uh, overall, I think that um, yeah, I think overall, I would uh, suggest trying this out, uh, you know, and and see if um, it gives you like a, some intuition around what range of spreads to set for bot, um, you know, or, or like a, or maybe what you do. So um, so yeah, maybe we, we just one final thing we can try is uh, let's let's kind of change the spreads here. Um, let's assume that we're gonna do fifty basis point spreads instead of ten, and uh, and then let's uh, see how that works out. Um, okay, yeah, so, so as you can see that now when I change um, spreads 50, it um, it did less trades. Uh, and uh, and so, so so I think that, um, yeah, uh, overall, um, I, I think this, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a good kind of like a you know, test tool, uh, but uh, I think this is just V1 of this backtesting script. And, uh, you know, I would actually want to kind of expand on this to see how useful it is um, as a next step. They basically, um, it's an analogy of like we like leaks like that plant where like newcomers come in and then someone hard like a big well harvests it and then other newcomers come in and then they're all being harvested and this uh, weird dynamic between the whales and the newcomers and uh, basically the story on the strategy was that it started out from a uh, trading bot that's on OKCoin Bitcoin trading platform. And then um, back then there were no trading fees. And so someone um, built this strategy and converted like 6,000 yen to 250K yen. And, um, but then basically um, they've stopped, they've begun to levy trading fees and this is no longer effective, but um, basically um, Dome implemented that and um, to see if uh, how it's going. And also uh, maybe if you find that there are some campaigns where there's zero trading fees, it may be something that would work. Script um, has the prerequisites that I mentioned about the story and a description on the trends and what it does. And basically it uses a parameter called burst threshold to calculate the last 15 trades, the prices, the um, volume and all that to indicate whether it's a bull market or a bear market. Thank you. Bye everyone.